Welcome to the first video on this series on robotic arm manipulation using reinforcement learning. So what we're going to be walking through here is using TD3 and PyTorch to teach a simulated robotic arm to open doors. We're uh, borrowing quite a bit of code from Phil Tabor's videos. Um, so if you're interested in the theory or a more in-depth lesson, I would highly recommend checking out his videos. Um, this is going to primarily just be a code walkthrough of how I got this particular solution working. I'm making a few assumptions here. So first, I am on Linux. The, uh, the RoboSuite code works a lot, or the RoboSuite library works a lot better on Linux. It's a lot easier to get installed. If you are on Windows, you can still make the solution work, but you're going to need to put in a little bit more effort. Um, it's not just going to work out of the box like it frequently does here. I'm also making the assumption that you are relatively familiar with both Python and reinforcement learning in general. Um, again, you don't have to be. You are welcome to just roll through the court, roll through the uh, video series. I highly recommend typing things out as I do and uh, encoding the solution out with me, and hopefully you'll learn a lot from it either way. Uh, as usual, my disclaimer is that I am a hobbyist. I am not uh, someone who does this professionally. I'm someone who enjoys putting together my, my own solutions for these hobby problems and, uh, and posting about them here for you. So with that in mind, let's start by showing you uh, what we're going to be building. So this is the completed code on my machine. Uh, you can see our simulated robot here trying to get the door open and he succeeded and it's going to run through a, a loop of three tries here just to show that it's really got it. And the algorithm we're going to be writing will generalize to a few different problems. So, so far I've been able to get it to open doors and pick up blocks. I have not been able to successfully get it to sort objects. So, but at the end of this uh, series, you will be able to duplicate this uh, behavior. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. I'm assuming that you are using Anaconda, so I will be running Conda create. And we will call this lessons dash td3 RoboSuite door. And I'm going to be creating it with Python 3.11. And we'll say yes. All right. Conda activate. What do we call it again? Lessons TD3 RoboSuite door. Okay. And then I am just going to create a new directory for TD3 RoboSuite door here. And we will open that up in PyCharm. Alright, so we've got a fresh PyCharm project here. Um, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just make sure we can pull in all the dependencies and then we're going to lay out the base for the, uh, the, main, the main script. This is going to be a multi-part series. This is a relatively long code base, so we will not be running through all of it in this one video. So first things first, let's go ahead and create a requirements.txt. And in that requirements txt, we are going to put Jim 
at 0.23.0, it's always a good idea to pin your library versions. PyBullet at 3.2.6, matplotlib 3.8.2, tensorboard at 3.2.15.1, RoboSuite itself at 1.4.0, term color at 2.4.0, h5pi at 3.10.0, and then uh, because I'm pulling down the CUDA version of PyTorch, we are going to reference their CUDA URL. So I'm going to say extra index URL download.pytorch.org slash WHL slash CU118. And I'm going to talk about this one more in just a moment. And from this, I'm going to pull torch, torch vision, and torch audio. All right. So that should be our entire requirements file. So in here, we are already, let's go to TD3 RoboSuite door. And we're just going to run, we're all, we've already activated the uh, environment here. So we're already in lessons TD3, TD3 RoboSuite door. So I'm going to do a pip install dash r requirements.txt, and that's going to start installing. So that will take a moment. So I said I was going to talk about uh, this extra index URL piece. To do that, let's pull up the PyTorch getting started documentation. So, and you can find this either by going to the link, and I'll put it in the video description, um, but also just by Googling you know, PyTorch CUDA installation. And what that's going to give you is if you select the appropriate options for your platform, so you know in my case, stable, Linux, pip, Python, and, and CUDA 11.8, um, it's going to give you the appropriate command to go and install PyTorch and have it work um, in a stable manner with your GPU, um, with your, your CUDA libraries. So, you know, if you had Windows, you could put in that information and then you get a, a different install guide. Um, so I would highly recommend checking this out and matching this to your platform, not just directly copying what I'm doing. Um, and again, I will put this link in the description. All right, we successfully did our installs here. So let's go ahead and uh, we are going to go to settings, project, Python interpreter. And I'm just going to choose the interpreter that we just, the environment we just made as our interpreter. And you go to your choice of environment, bin, and then Python will be somewhere in this list. Okay. And you'll notice uh, PyCharm is now indexing down here. It is no longer erroring on our requirements TXT. It's not telling us that, uh, you know, that it doesn't have the appropriate libraries anymore. So let's go ahead and start building this out. We are going to get rid of all of the, the sample code here and start with our imports. So we're going to import time, because we'll need that later. Import OS, import gym, import high bullet ENVs, um, because the some of the environments, actually I don't think we need pie bullet for this one. That is a different project. Import numpy as NP from torch utils tensorboard 
import summary writer. We're going to be using TensorBoard to, uh, to log some of the data from our project. Import RoboSuite as suite. And then from RoboSuite.wrappers, import gym wrapper. All right, so that should be all of our imports, at least for this, uh, this file. So we're going to say if name equals main. And if you haven't seen this before, this is basically just saying to only run the code below if someone's actually running this file. Um, if someone imports the file, it doesn't run it. This is a best practice for, um, you know, sort of your, your main script file. And we're going to say if not, we'll need a couple of, we'll need a path here. If not, OS path exists, temp td3, os.make ders, temp slash td3. And in this case, we're going to set our environment name to door. So I'm going to say env name equals door. And then we can start uh, actually creating our environment. There are quite a few arguments here. So env equals suite.make env name is the first one. Robots equals panda. And uh, the panda robot is the one you, you saw in the very beginning of this video. Um, controller configs. equals suite dot load controller config default controller equals joint velocity and what that's basically saying is that our, our method of controlling the robot is to pass it joint velocity values that's what that's telling us we're going to say has render equals false horizon equals 300. So let's talk about this one. There is no end condition for these types of environments. The, the program doesn't stop when the robot successfully opens the door. So what horizon gives us is it, it tells us that after 300 time steps, the episode's going to go ahead and conclude with whatever, whatever uh, score it made. At that point, if you don't set a horizon, it defaults to something like a thousand. What I found was lower than 300, so 100 or 200, didn't always give the robot time to figure out how to how to work through the environment. But doing more, you know, 400, 500, it found a solution and then was just kind of wandering around, uh, not sure what to do next because there were there were no other environment rewards for it. So. 300 ended up being the sweet spot for me for this particular problem, but you may find other values make sense for other problems you're trying to solve. Uh, reward shaping, we're gonna set to true. Uh, otherwise, if you set reward shaping to false, it, uh, it only gives the robot a reward when it successfully opens the door, which is probably more of a real world Real world use case would be a reward only when it succeeds at the task, but it also makes it much, much harder to solve the problem because the robot is just wandering around, maybe bumping into the door and getting some reward. So this, uh, this basically gives it small rewards along the way to actually solving the problem. And then we're going to say control freak frequency equals 20. All right, so let's run it as it is so far and see if we have any errors, any typos, and we don't. This is a normal warning. And then let's go ahead and implement our gym wrapper. We, impl we imported it up here. I'm gonna say env equals gym wrapper env. And uh, if you've worked with any of the OpenAI gem environments. This basically gives you a standardized way to interact with the environment. 
what the gem wrapper does is takes the robo suite environment and fits it into that gem framework. So something that you've worked on outside of robo suite can be you know, ported in and work more or less out of the box. So let's run it one more time and just make sure this still works. And we're there. Uh, again, we get, a, we get a warning, but it is not something we have to worry about too much. So one of the other things I like to do is uh, go ahead and create a test.py. So the main.py for me is the, the training file and then the test.py is to see you know, how our agent's doing. Um, I found these things take a very, very long time to train sometimes, so it's nice to have a separate script that you can run throughout the training process to see what the robot's actually doing. You know, we can graph and chart things, but the intuition of just being able to see, um, oh, it, it went off and started spinning in circles, or uh, it's just jittering instead of moving towards the goal, can, can help move you towards being able to fix those problems and and you know solve the challenge here. So I'm going to create a test Python file and we'll do some of the same work here. In fact, we are going to be lazy and do some copy and paste. So I'm going to copy everything in main over to test and we're just going to make a few small changes. So for test we are going to say has renderer equals true. And, oh, something I forgot over here. Uh, we also want to say use camera obs equals false for both of them. Uh, what, what that would give you is it would give you during training, it would give you the robot's uh, camera view as part of the training data. We can absolutely do that, and I may put out a video later on that, uh, that covers how. But in this case, we, we don't, we don't want to have to worry about you know, setting up a, a convolutional net to recognize those images. We're just targeting solving the, the robotic manipulation problem. So if there's interest, I will set up a second video series that covers how to uh, actually pull images from the robot and train on that. So this time we're saying has render true, use camera observation is false. Um, we're going to keep horizon at 300. I'm going to set a render camera. So render camera equals front view. And that's basically going to tell it, hey, uh, this time we do have a renderer, we have a render camera. If we're in our environment, we're going to uh, we're going to show some rendering on the screen. We're going to show the robot image that you saw at the beginning of this video. So, and then I'm also going to say has off screen renderer equals true and everything else should stay the same and we should just be able to run our test script here. And again we get no errors. Alright, that seems like a good place to stop the video. I'm going to post links to uh, PyTorch as well as the RoboSuite docu documentation down in the video description. Um, in the next video, we will start working on our code for our neural networks. So thank you and see you in the next one.